Hey guys, welcome back to Taste of Victory. I'm your host, TasteDRC, and today we're taking a look at the Japanese booster set 5 meta. So this is uh, two sets ahead of us in Japan. We are in 1.5, which is up to their booster set 3. So this is booster set 5. Next we're going to get booster set 4. But this is only so far away, because I believe this is in June, July or June for us. So it's good to start taking notes now. So if you've been following along, you know that the big winner between these last two uh, booster set 4 and 5 is Yellow. Because if booster set 4, Yellow got uh, War Greymon, it was a huge boost for them, consistency boost. And now they got uh, Lord Nightmon, or Crusadermon in English I believe it's called. And this card is so busted, it could play up, to, it could play any level um, 3 or lower Yellow, level 3 Yellow Digimon like a rookie. Or any like Royal Knight or something like that type Digimon in it, I think it's like a Knight in it, in its typing. So because of that, it could play Nightmon. And uh, that lets you skip an entire ultimate onto the field for free, which is just insane. And Nightmon minuses your DP by 4,000, so it's busted, clears boards. Crusadermon is such a busted deck, so it's very popular in Japan right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the meta. This is three weeks into Booster Set 5, I believe. Maybe a bit more. It's just the Digimon TCG review hadn't been posting because of Corona lockdowns, and now they're finally lifting. But yeah, many thanks again to Digimon TCG Review. Their uh, description, their Twitter is in the description below where they post these. Please check them out, show them some love, because without this, these videos would not be possible. They are an incredible tool to the community and deserve every bit of respect and recognition and uh, admiration for it. So let's go ahead and get out to the review. So here we see that the clear winner right now in Japan is um, Yellow. But we see that uh, Red is behind, but not terribly far behind, with about half of the winnings of um, Yellow. If we look at the actual breakdown for the week of um, March 15th to 21st, we see that Yellow actually has double the tops of the second highest number, which is Red with seven tops. So do keep in mind that this is like just a bunch of locals and not even that many. So this is out of 34 tops for that week for 34 local events. But this is, you know, with lockdown and uh, Bandai's plans being messed up by Corona and stuff, this is uh, the most accurate data we could get right now. And it is still a lot of uh, local toppings. So we do get that uh, 14 tops from Yellow, like huge, by far doubling every other top in that week. So Yellow is by far away the winner. And then we see here that Purple, an interesting thing to note is that Purple is the third highest placing. Before, a lot of people were expecting it to be um, Green, because Green was dominating before Yellow was. And then Green got nerfed, and a lot of people seem to be moving off at expectations, because the nerf isn't in effect until April 1st in Japan. So they are not, um, or actually was it March 1st in Japan and April 1st for us? Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think the uh, ban is already in effect for Japan, which is why it's fallen off so much. And while Green has gotten some new uh, Digiburst tools that are interesting, Purple has gotten a lot of cool tools. And you see here, this was, um, Purple starts to spike around uh, the week of, last week of the 8th to the 14th of Japan. Because a lot of new stuff has been discovered for Purple, a, a little combo involving um, either Purple Metal Garurumon or uh, Crest Garurumon and then Darkness Claw and then Gilmons and then uh, the other Gilmons in the stack to restand and a bunch of other stuff to keep restanding and swinging through all your securities with one combo. And that is a very fun deck, very powerful, but it is kind of um, glass cannony is the thing, so I don't know how good it actually is outside of like hoping you draw into everything, but it's seeing traction in Japan and actually becoming the third most top deck in of this current week of the week ending uh, current, as in a uh, most current results tracked by Digimon TCG Review, which was the week ending the 21st, so yeah, most current. And then, um, so that was that week, but let's go ahead and go into uh, the previous week. So this is for the week March 8th to the 14th, as we see yellow is still topping, but here it was a lot closer between green and purple. So that's an interesting thing to note, that green was actually um, doing pretty good, being pretty abused it seems like, until the ban list came out, which right there we see was the beginning of March and it just teetered down. So this is taking a lot into account from those top things before um, it, it got banned I'm assuming. But as we see here, purple is tied for second here with green, so that's more of that um, hype with the uh, the purple Metal Garumon combo, so I know a lot of people want to get, get rid of their purple Metal Garumons, and they're like three bucks right now because like, no one wants them, but first booster set five, uh, they could be worth something, they could be a little decent, um, something to keep a track on. It looks like black has been doing very poorly, but uh, with the new set it has gone up a little bit at least. I can't even remember off the top of my head what black got from this set other than that uh, Omnimon, but uh, which purple can make use of better anyways. But yeah, we do see a little bit of a rise for it. If we go two weeks back, so this is the first week of March, the first to the seventh, 
we see not too many results here because this was just the start of the lifting of lockdown for Japan. But we do see that yellow is still once again on top here, but it's a lot more closer because of the lack of results. Uh, yellow and then red and green. But yeah, that is yellow still taking away the top. So by and far, best deck right now in the meta is uh, currently yellow. But with red is a close second. So let's go ahead and see at these topping lists and why is that. So here we got four uh, lists pulled up. This is the Google spreadsheet that um, Digimon TCG Review provides. And if you look at this, this is an incredibly detailed spreadsheet with the history of toppings all linked, linked here. Um, for you to go to their Twitter and see the list and then a breakdown of the cars that they are running. So unbelievable, powerful tool. So many thank yous to uh, Digimon TCG Review for providing this to us. And here we have uh, the most recent topping on this video in this spreadsheet as of now, as of recording. And that is uh, this Lord Nightmon build, which is pretty standard. So we have Lord Nightmon as your 4 of Mega, your main boss, and then you have Slash Angemon as your backup. Because Slash Angemon is incredible, minusing anything by 8,000 DP on Digivolution. So even though it has low uh, DP at 8,000 itself to make up for that, um, the DP minus is so huge that if something is rested, it's just going to be able to swing over it anyways after the DP decrease, even if it doesn't destroy it. So it's an incredible backup mega. So coupled with um, Nightmon here, that Crusadermon can play for free. Nightmon, when played, minuses of Digimon's DP by 4,000. So Digivolve a um, Slash Angemon over this, you suddenly decrease something's DP by 12,000. So that destroys it right there and now, like right alone. Like that is insane and so oppressive and hard to keep up with. Because not only are you getting such a huge advantage in your board state, you now have two megas on the field, but you also uh, removed your opponent's mega in the process or whatever else they were building in the stack. And it's huge. But let's see what else goes into these decks. So we have here the um, Salomon, the two cost rookies are always going to be played in any deck because they're just so cheap to play into the field and help you go wide, help you choke your opponent at one memory. We got Bushi Agumon because Bushi Agumon is great for being cheated out through Crusader Mon's effect because it has rush. So you can ignore the five cost and just swing that turn for game if you have, you know, like only one security left, you need one last check to destroy to win for game. Bushi Agumon lets you attack because its ability rush lets it attack, lets it bypass um, Summoning Sickness and attack the turn it's played. We have Kotsamon here. Kotsamon searches through your deck um, for top five cards for any uh, warrior or or knight type Digimon, I believe, are the uh, hits. Uh, if I got this wrong, you can always use digimoncard.dev to uh, check for the correct um, effects. But yeah, this is a consistency card. It searches the top five cards. So if you're missing something from your combo pieces, you grab that, add it in. Patamon is fantastic because it's inheritable. Gives you a once per turn memory plus one if you destroy something through DP minusing. So with Crusader Mon uh, summoning all these things from field, you are always going to get that off. So you know, that's an extra memory. Then uh, Star Mon, another one contributes to the DP minusing. This um, minuses 1000 DP to one Digimon for every Digimon on your field. So with Crusader Mon cheating stuff out with your cheap two cost rookies to hard cast, Lord, uh, or rather Star Mon starts racking up damage so fast. And even if you don't cheat him off with Crusader Mon, he's a three cost to play and he could potentially be like a minus four if you're playing it right. So insane, fantastic rookie that it's only gonna get better. And then for Tamers, they see three TK. It's gonna be very common because TK is important for consistency because you have Kotimon, you have TK, you're searching your deck, and now you are searching your security. So like there is nowhere for your cards to hide from you. You will get them and then it sets you three to memory or rather it sets you your memory to three if you are below it. So that is crucial to be able to play Crusader Mon without passing turn and still keep it your turn to use its when attacking effect. So TK is a staple in any of these decks. And then we got Gladimon. So Gladimon, uh, similar to um, TK, it lets you search a security for a Digimon with Knight in it, I believe, or maybe a keyword. I don't remember off the top of my head just now, but it's another consistency card. And I actually am not the biggest fan of um, Gladimon because it's four cost to play and you already have so many other consistency tools. There are better champions you could be running in um, yellow that it feels kind of like a trap. Um, like you think, oh, that's a consistency. But at this point, I feel it becomes diminishing returns and you don't really need it. But we do have the two Kortramon, or the two uh, Unimon. So Unimon is the two cost 6k blocker. It's a fantastic card because, um, you know, um, in the booster set five meta, there's a lot of removal for 5k DP cards. So these, um, these 6k blockers become really uh, handy to avoid a lot of destruction. Then we got vanilla. Then we got one cost. So this is a new introduced in Booster Set 4, the one cost blockers that um, give you... It's a blocker for one cost, but it's 5k. It's a trade-off. And now there's a lot of 5k hate. Uh, this is a removal card. It minuses DP for four based on how many Digimon you have on the field, I want to say. Uh, vanilla ultimate. Nightmon. And then uh, War Groundmon for the Digiburst effect. 
because uh, his Digiburst is uh, discard two sources and then minus 4,000 to a Digimon. And then of course the Boulder Arm, Chaos on Boulder Arm, because when Digivolve, minus 7,000 to two of your to one of your opponent's Digimon, or like, you know, distribute it however you like. So you can potentially get minus 14k to something, get rid of a Ragnalordmon or an Onimon, something like that, or the new advanced Onimon introduced in this set. And then for the eggs, you're going to see this a lot. It's the four Coralmons, or Pikmons, and then one Coralmon. So this is either going to be Coralmon to uh, continue with that DP minusing theme of the deck, or it's going to be an Upamon for draw consistency. If we look at another topping list, uh, first place, this is a lot of similar, so exact same four Pikmin, <laughs> four Pikmon, and then we saw the Upamon I just mentioned for drawing. Four blinding, uh, three blinding light, because this discards one security and gets you two memories, so that's a fantastic card. TK, Bushi, that Starmon, Kotemon, Vanilla, one class blocker, two class blocker. So basically, we see it's almost the entirely same list, except we got like one less Holder Arm running the this uh, option card in exchange for the Crusader Mon option card. But because uh, Yellow's pretty much figured out in this set, because we see here again, same Starmon's at four, you gotta max it. Pulse Mon, so this is actually a promo with the Vital Bracelet in Japan. Uh, on our premium Pandai Pew. On our premium Bandai pre-orders, uh, we did not get this promo card, so I'm not sure how they're going to distribute it here. Probably a dash pack or a tournament entry reward. Then of course, two of the Patamon. This is the Salamon. It's interesting because it continues the DP minusing theme of the deck. It's minus 1000 DP when attacking Inheritable, so that's pretty good. More Kotamon. Another two cost Manila. So Anjumon, um, its Inheritable effect is when, digi when attacking, play a level 3 rookie from hand. So that uh, couples nicely with uh, Crusadermon to let you uh, play more bodies on board in one swing. It's really oppressive. And then most of the same stuff. So we see here that yellow is really figured out at this point in the Japanese meta. It's basically just what do you want to play off of Crusadermon when you're attacking. So here we have the Lusamon, which does get played out for free by Crusadermon. I don't, uh, not a too big a fan of um, Lusamon because he really messes with ratios, feels kind of bricky, but he is a powerful card. It's gotten right. See again, the four Pikmin, four Pikmon, the one Upamon. So this is the standard uh, yellow build. Very solid, very oppressive, super strong, lots of removal while at the same time building your board. Probably too good and we're probably going to be see seeing it hit the list like in um, like Green did pretty soon. But yeah, it's a fantastic deck. Uh, double the tops of the second highest placing deck. So it's definitely um, a problem, a deck to look out for. So if we look after that, we see that Red was the second highest topping deck and we're going to see why soon. So Red's new gimmick in Booster Set 5 was the uh, Digivolving on top of itself. So if you look at Shoutmon DX, it has two uh, Digivolution costs, and that is because it could Digivolve over a level 5 for 4 memory or a level 6 for 2 memory. So this way, you can, if you have a bunch of Shoutmons, you can just infinitely loop the stack. And it's, it's when Digivolve effect lets you put a Digimon, any Digimon from your hand into its stack uh, of level 5 or lower, level 6 or lower, I believe, into its stack, if it's red. So Shoutmon is fantastic for that, you get a huge stack. Um, it's second effect when Digivolve is blow up any level 5 or less Digimon for every Zeke Greymon or Shoutmon or Omni Shoutmon in its stack. So you could potentially wipe a board if they have just a bunch of 5k blockers or less Digimon, something like that. So that's why Shoutmon is a fantastic card. Um, the Blitz effect, or rather the advanced effect in this new set lets you swing, it, lets you attack still even if you pass memory over to your opponent's turn. So that plus the new advanced Omnimon lets you like get a bunch of security attack plus one, bunch of swings at once, and then finish the game off with Omnimon even though you're passing memory per turn. So that's the cool uh, removal plus speedy Digivolution to get a bunch of swings tactic that Red has had introduced in this set. But we see a lot of similar things from Booster Set uh, 1.5 that we're currently familiar with. We see the Biomon is making a resurgence here in popularity because of the extra memory it gives you that you might need to go into Shoutmon DX. The Vanilla Rookie is always going to be run. We are uh, the starter deck Agumon. Shoutmon is a new addition unless you search the top five or your top five cards of your deck for a uh, only Shoutmon or a card with the advanced effect. And we got the one cost blockers I've uh, told you guys about, more vanillas. And we got the tie here. So tie is making a comeback and is really good because um, let's say you hard cast uh, ultimate, you know, we just hard cast the ground drum because it's only five cost. So it doesn't matter uh, for the case of Tai because you can go into Shoutmon, use its effect, and then you got a three card stack right there. So if you go into another Shoutmon, which would only be two memory, you now use its effect again and put another card underneath there. You now have a five card stack. So Tai, despite the fact that you skip like three levels, is now once again live. So you can be swinging even though you're passing over to your opponent's turn with security attack plus one. And then we do have like some security attack inheritable plus ones here from like Volkmon, Voltramon, and Omni Shoutmon here. 
So this could uh, ramp up quickly, and uh, you don't even need to worry about if you break and you don't see your rookies, because you just hard cast your ultimate, and then these guys will still give you Ty's effect going live. So that pairs really nicely with the Onimon that lets you want to spend itself for an extra attack. If we see this list, this is more of a control-focused list, focused around Nokia, because Nokia is a new tamer introduced in Booster Set 5. When you play it, you get to play an Agumon for free. And then uh, when, uh, Agumon, when a Greymon or Onimon with Digivolve, you can rest it and reduce the Digivolution cost by 1. So this pairs nicely because you got this Agumon here, and you're probably familiar with this here in 1.0 and 1.5. It lets you search for your tamers when played. So when you play off Nokia, it plays it for free. You can replenish yourself, hopefully hit another Nokia to stack that effect of reducing the Digivolution cost. And then we got this uh, Agumon that searches for Greymons and Omnimons. And so this is definitely more Greymon focused. But you see here we got this Alteris, uh, Alteris Mode Metal Greymon. So when you Digivolve over um, um, in level 5, uh, you could blow up a level 4. And then we got Blitz Greymon, which is popular right now. Seems to make a resurgence because it offers more control. You know, the Digivolve, Victory Greymon. When Digivolve, you can burst and destroy an 8k or less Digimon. And then this War Greymon, which is a boost at 5, lets you destroy a blocker. And when attacking Inheritable, lets you destroy a level 3 or less Digimon. So it's definitely a more control focused uh, Onimon build. And then we got all the Onimons over here. Would you guys are very familiar with them and know how to, um, controlling they are, including this new one, um, Onimon X. So yeah, this is the new. Uh, the more control focused build, and if you see this red here, this is uh, more traditional to the one we saw before with an Omnimon uh, Shoutmon DX focused build. Whole we'll focus on going tall and swinging for game uh, with one security check, and then finishing it off with Omnimon for the rest. So that's what um, red's build's kind of been. Uh, we can look at purple here. So if we look at the purple history, let me pull up one list for you guys really quickly. If we go to the latest one here, we do see this is the top as of the 20th of March. And this is, here it is, purple list at top. So this here we see this is a more, uh, so here we see the combo with uh, Chaos Gallant Mon. So Chaos Gallant Mon lets you destroy something when Digivolve. I believe it's like uh, 4k or less, something like that. Might be 5k. And then um, you have the War Growl Mon underneath it, which gives security attack plus one. And then we got the Lily W Mon, lets you destroy more stuff, paired wells with that. And then the, this um, Onimon Swart, I think, Onimon Swart. And then um, it lets you play uh, up to two, eight play cost or less Digimon. So that is pretty crazy with like say Chimeramon. You could get double removal, you could get all uh, your blockers out, you could get more Greymon out and then Digivolve into your combo with Gallantmon next turn. So this kind of combo and then the purple middle Gurumon combo that I mentioned earlier, let's see if we can find the topping list for it. Seems to be the two most popular uh, purple builds right now. They're pretty fun to pilot. So let's see if this is a good example of it here to show you guys. So this is actually more of a Beelzebub Turbo and Mellow Miyoto's my focus build because you see the Arukuda mon. So that's pretty cool to see this kind of stuff, stuff topping for purple in Japan. But yeah, so that is the big takeaway from this meta and why these two these decks are so strong. Purple, or rather yellow, is by far and away the champion of the yellow of the BT5 meta. I would not be surprised to see some hit going to um yellow in the future because of that and we see red is second behind and that makes me really happy because i like red as a playstyle in general and i'm going to be playing it well into the future well into bt5 uh, green is falling off blue has fallen off hard which is really disappointing but the takeaway from this is just that hexa blaumon is an incredible boss monster uh, it is such a good stun deck it's it's digivolution line supports it very well but the takeaway from this is that uh digi digi uh, source digivolution sources you know the digivolution cards Digivolution sources discarding is just not a very strong, impactful effect. Especially not in this meta where you have one of the best decks in the meta being Shoutmon, which is just put more onto its stack, you know, so none of Hexen Blau's effects are alive. And Green does a similar thing with the new Digiburst cards. So it's just that, you know, that, uh, that um, uh, sources discarding effect just isn't impactful enough and it's easy to play around is the problem with the identity of Blue, which is why falling more and more as other decks were able to use Onimon better than it. So hopefully we see something cool and unique for uh, Blue and Booster Set 6. But yeah, for now, this is the general state of the meta for Booster Set 5. I love playing with this even though we're still on BT5 here. I love testing this on Tabletop Simulator here and there with friends. Still a uh, very fun meta. I'm liking it a lot. I'm not a big fan of Crusader Mon, but other than that, I do enjoy the meta and I hope you guys like this video. That is what's going on in Japan. That is what you're going to have to prepare for when Booster Set 5 comes here soon, only a couple months from now. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you guys want to see in the next future videos. And until those next videos, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory.